Hidden Gems of DFW is a video podcast to help marketing professionals as well as newbies learn the art of marketing and finding the treasures that help a small business grow. This podcast will be filled with gems and treasures in the DFW area from some of the best guests in the business. And even if you are not in the DFW area, these treasures will work for you. And now get ready for the Hidden Gems of DFW podcast with Chris O'Connor. Hello, everybody. I am so excited to be here today. I am Chris O'Connor, your host of Hidden Gems of DFW video podcast. And I have got a very exciting guest today. Flew in all the way for California just for me. (laughs) No, not really. But I convinced him to come on the podcast today because I feel it is so important for you all to meet him and learn how he can help your business because every business out there deals with reviews and he's all about reviews. Who is he? Curtis Boyd from the Transparency Company. Curtis, I'm so excited you're here today. Hey, thanks, Chris. I'm excited to be here, too. This is really neat. I know. It's so much fun to be here. And it's so much fun to be in person and just to have a conversation, right? Just to chat. So first of all, I want you to tell us more about yourself because you're in Texas and you're from... from California, right? That's right. So there's not a lot of people that know about you. So I'm glad I'm the first one to kind of let you see the area. So tell us about yourself. Tell us what you do. Go on. Totally. So my career starts about nine years ago. I was a student nurse in a hospital. I was in my last semester. I was precepting in the ER and a cosmetic surgeon came down and he started ruining my days in a bad mood. I'm like, doctor, what, what, why are you in a bad mood? Like what's going on? He's like, I got a fake review. It's hurting my private practice and I'm having a, just a miserable time with it. I'm like, oh, well, doctor, I, I owe $32,000 in nursing school loans. Like your, your day's not that bad. Trust me. Yeah. And he's like, I said, Curtis, I've lost way more than that this week. I probably lost a hundred K this week, 10 to 15 consults just gone from that fake review. Mm-hmm. If you figured out how to remove it, I'd pay off your student loans. I was like, what doctor, are you serious? Like that's, that's a lot of money. And he's like, yeah, I'm serious. I've hired lawyers. I've hired reputation people. Nobody's been able to help me. My mom knew the doctor. So she worked at the hospital too. She's like, Curtis, he's a stand-up guy. I'm sure he meant it. I'm like, all right, doctor, I'm going to take it on. I, I was a student nurse. I didn't know anything about contracts, about business. I, I was getting ready to graduate. Right. I take it on. I tell him, I'm challenge accepted. 48, 48 hours, 72 hours into this, I got nowhere. I'm talking with everyone I can, emailing, calling, like leaving threatening messages. Nothing is working. Like I'm doing absolutely everything and I'm getting nowhere. I had about 900 bucks in my bank account at the time. I ended up buying a plane ticket to San Francisco and I I started staking the company where the review was. And I said, excuse me, do you work here? I have a doctor in LA and they have a fake review. I need help. Like, can you help me remove it? I go, are, are you crazy? Are you homeless? Are you hungry? What's going on? I'm like, no, no, no. I, I, I'm, I'm a student nurse. I, there's a doctor with a fake review. I'm trying to help him. Can you help me? And I'd be like, no, no, no. I can't, I can't help you. I'd be like, I, I approach another person. And I could tell in their eye when I asked them that they knew how to help, that something could be done. So I'd hope. So I stayed, stayed another day. I was 23 at the time, having a great time in San Francisco. Uh-huh. And finally, on the third day, a girl sat down with me and she's like, okay. She sat down with me at a local Starbucks and showed me uh, you know, how to successfully dispute a review. And 48 hours later, I had a check for $32,000 and a new outlook on how I could serve people and help, right? That doctor happened to be on the board of directors for the entire physician network. Oh my goodness. He hooked, he hooked me up with a CPA, a bookkeeper. He told me how much to charge. And before I graduated from nursing school, I had over 750 doctors that I was helping with their online reputation. So. I, yeah. (laughs) Wow, that's phenomenal. (laughs) It's a pretty fun story uh, in the sense that I had no idea this was going to happen to me. I had no idea I was going to graduate with a bachelor's degree in nursing and never use it. But from there, I I, I still showed up at the hospital, no longer in scrubs though, but in my khakis, ready to talk to doctors about their their reviews, their reputation, their customer experience, stuff like that. Uh And it was hilarious. Uh, I ended up 
working for other types of businesses, con- you know, contractors, lawyers, you name it. I mean, everyone deals with reviews. Mm-hmm. And I realized I was getting really busy. Um, I would hire people and I'd, I'd have them help me. They'd, they'd go off and start their own company, which is, I'm happy for them. But I realized that what I was doing wasn't really scalable. And uh, I kept hearing on, you know, these interviews with Elon Musk about AI and how AI is going to take over the world. And I'm like, huh, could AI do what I do? Identify reviews and dispute them? It's like, totally could. And if anyone's going to replace myself, it's going to be me. So so I went back to school, uh, learned how to code, and I built a software company called Objection Co. that identifies illegitimate reviews and disputes them automatically. And uh, I, I got to focus on growing the business, and the software got to deal with the reviews. It was fantastic. But I kept having the same conversations over and over with business owners. Hey, I got a, I got a bad review. I'd say, great. Is, okay, is it real? Yeah, it's real, but it's hurting my business. And I'd say, okay, I don't, I can't remove real reviews. I don't want to silence consumers. I, you know, uh, unfortunately, there's nothing I can do. And I'd be like, okay, can you, can you just post me twenty or thirty reviews? Then can mm-hmm. you, can you just write fifty reviews for me? And I'd be, no, that's not what I do. I, and so what I realized is that a lot of these business owners had a lot of fake reviews, and there were no tools to identify these fake positive reviews. That's when I went back to school again for data science, machine learning, and AI, uh, and I ended up working on a data set to program algorithms to detect fake positive reviews, and I started the transparency company, uh, which I launched about five five months ago. Wow. Yeah. That is so exciting. You know, what's interesting about that is it's amazing how many people out there contact you to write fake reviews. I just had one last week on LinkedIn. Yep. That's the first time on LinkedIn that I've been approached. And I've been on LinkedIn for since 2007. I thought it was more out in the Google world, right? But uh, is it infiltrating all like LinkedIn and Yelp and Google Business Profile and wherever else reviews are put, right? Absolutely. Uh, business owners are being solicited to purchase fake reviews. Some people over in India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, you name it, they will email you, LinkedIn you, spam you and say, hey, your competitors have great reviews. What about you? Do you want to buy 20, 30 reviews? Come on. Like, mm-hmm. Nothing bad can happen here. Right. And then unfortunately, a lot of people do purchase these fake reviews or they even seek them out themselves. If you Google buy fake reviews or buy positive Google reviews, it's page one, rank one, right? It's immediately available. Mm-hmm. It's not hard to find. No. And unfortunately, people are buying, especially new businesses, they're buying fake reviews right when they start up to try and compete with the local marketplace, not realizing what what the implications of that are, not realizing the long-term effects of, of purchasing fake reviews. But, but yeah, I mean, 2020, 2021, Google alone removed 130 million fake reviews. Wow, 130 million. Yeah. <clears throat> and that's probably doesn't even, that's probably not even a quarter percent. I mean, it's it's a lot. I don't know, like off the top of my head, I don't know what percentage of total fake review, uh, total reviews, which ones were fake, but it's 180,000 fake reviews per day that are being removed. And if you think about that, if you price them out at 10 to $20 per review, this is a multi-billion dollar industry. Online, fake online reviews. Wow, I haven't even thought about it that way. 180,000. Yes. Per day. Removed. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a huge, massive industry. Wow. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, uh, a, lot of, a lot of business owners and a lot of consumers aren't fully educated and aware about it. And that's, uh, that's something we're hoping to change. Well, I would, I would venture out to say that probably 90% of the business owners, 95% of the business owners don't understand that. They, they just want a review. They don't care. They want a review. And unfortunately, a lot of them probably are. Now, I've known since I've gotten into business back in 2007 that never, because I do a lot of networking with people who are in the industry and search engine optimization that never, ever pay for reviews because it will always come back to bite you. Now, yep. I know there was a time in the previous company, the garage door company, that um, Penguin came along. And, you know, all of a sudden, we just kind of disappeared off the internet. And I couldn't figure out why. And I started digging, doing a little... The 
previous owner had hired somebody who was not probably more like a black hat yep. than a white hat. And, you know, he didn't care. He just paid him, right? And that's why we, so I literally had to basically start from scratch again and start all over and rebuild the website, rebuild, 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 rebuild. So that was, what was Penguin, 2008? Yeah, that was a while back. Um, <clears throat> and, or maybe it was a little, maybe it was 2011, somewhere around in there. That was a whooping. That was an absolute whooping. I mean, you just disappeared. Yeah. So well, I learned that hard lesson, you know, not that I did it, somebody else did it, but, and I always preach to everybody, you know, why, why wouldn't you just go pay for, no, I'm telling you, it's going to bite you in the derriere hard. And then what are you going to do? Yeah. Uh, a lot of bad spammy backlink profiles, businesses who, you know, worked with Black Hat SEOs got hammered. And a lot of those same practices, the bad backlinking, the the really poor quality content that Penguin hit, uh, they also usually implement fake positive re reviews. So anyone mm -hmm. that's hired someone from overseas like that where they can't identify all of the all of their reviews should really be paying attention to who is reviewing them a lot of people don't realize the liability behind those reviews as it's a part of their marketing and advertising um, and now that it's 2022 fast forward there's technology and more more importantly regulators that are starting to pay attention and starting to implement really hefty fines that could really put people out of business i know tell them what that fine is because it just you know we had some other fines, and I used to preach this to our technicians all the time, don't ever do this because yep. I'm not willing to lose the business because you decided you wanted to take an, a chance to do this one thing because those fines were just as hefty as what you're talking about, and that was $45,000. Okay, well, a small business that we were mm -hmm. could wipe you out Yep, like that. Yeah. So tell us, tell us what that could be. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I know there's not a definite <laughs> amount, but it's a pretty hefty one. Yeah. Well, about 45 days ago, I, I was lucky to spend some time with the director of the Federal Trade Commission, uh, the attorney, uh, Michael Atlison, and he spelled it out to me, essentially $46,000 fine per fake review. Okay. I hope you heard that. <laughs> I hope you heard that. I'm going to have him repeat that. Repeat yeah, it. Yeah, forty six thousand dollars approximately per per fake review per violation. Per violation. So let's say you've got a hundred. How much money is that? That's you right. can figure it out. Yeah, I'm not going to do it. I can do it in my head like that. Add a couple zeros, right? And then you're out of business. Yep. Almost a half a million dollars. Do you have a half a million dollars to waste on a fake review? I don't think most small businesses do. No. No. And it's so critical that you understand that. So critical that you understand that. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, unfortunately a lot of people just don't know, but a lot of people do know, and they're just not worried about it. And well, and that's why I brought you in today because I thought it was one of those extremely important things that small businesses need to understand, and they need to understand that. Nip it in the bud now, early, mm -hmm. you know, before it gets out of control. Because, okay, is there the review police out there? Probably not. Are the odds that you're going to get flagged? Probably not. But do you want to gamble? Are you a gambler? Are you going to throw that dice and, and gamble? I mean, all it takes is one. Yeah, you know, um, what's funny is, a lot of uh, review fraud investigations, when you get caught, it's not necessarily even about your business that was being audited. A lot of the times, it's actually another business who just happens to be in the same network. What happens is people who buy reviews, uh, people who sell fake reviews, they use the same profiles from most mul multiple clients. Yes. And another business is getting audited who you don't even know, you've never heard of. They just happen to use the same fake review vendor that you used. Mm -hmm. And now you're linked together and now you're busted. So whenever we like, whenever one company gets busted, it's really not just one. It's usually 30 or 40 other businesses. Mm -hmm. And if you think, oh, so my odds went from like one out of a thousand to 30 out of a thousand, the chances are 30 times higher than most people realize. Yeah, absolutely. Oh my gosh. All right. I sure hope you guys heard that because it it could devastate. It could just like wipe you out. And who wants to be wiped out? You went into a small business for a reason, right? Whether it be a service business, 
What well, it doesn't matter. It, every business gets reviews. It just doesn't matter. So we could keep chatting about this, <laughs> but we do have to take a quick little break. And as soon as we come back, um, he's going to give us two or three different tips that he already has ready for you to implement today. So we'll be right back. Cool. Did you know that consumers are 15 times more likely to have a negative experience from a company with fake positive reviews? Here at The Transparency Company, our mission is to provide affordable and quality software that can analyze the legitimacy of online reviews. We work hard to bring a new element of trust back to the online review marketplace. Contact us today to see what The Transparency Company can do for your company. Hi, everyone. I am Chris O'Connor, your host of Hidden Gems of DFW Video Podcast, and we are back with a special guest all the way from California. He flew in just for me, right? <laughs> Not really, but I took advantage while he was here. I met actually Curtis on Clubhouse, and Clubhouse is one of the newer social media outlets that people are going to, and it's growing like gangbusters, and there's a lot of business and a lot of great people that you can meet on Clubhouse, and that's where I met Curtis. Yeah. But today, we're talking about reviews and good ones, bad ones, and now we're in the area of, he's going to give us a few tips of what I'm assuming good review is, a bad review is. So Curtis, start with your first tip. What's your first tip for our audience? Sure. Um... You know, uh, a lot of people ask me, what, what's the best thing I can do for my reputation? Like, what, what's the best thing I could possibly do as a business owner? And a lot of, a lot of the time, it's, it's the very same thing. And a lot of people want to focus, oh, how do, I get, how do I text message my customers the right way or email them in a, in a way that's going to get me more reviews? I think the focus needs to be less about the, less about the tech and more about the customer experience. If, in my opinion, if, if business owners would really focus on doing every little thing they could for their customers, mm -hmm. they don't have to even ask their customers for reviews because their their customers going to be inspired. They're going to be so happy with what just happened. Like, what the heck? I I'm speechless about what just happened yes. right now. This is incredible. They'll go they'll go themselves online, and even more importantly, they're going to go tell friends and family and give you word of mouth referrals. Mm -hmm. So, with that, if you think about reputation management, there's uh, proactive and reactive. Mm -hmm. A lot of the stuff I used to do in the past, removing bad reviews was reactive. And I try and urge people, be really proactive about your reputation. Yes. Set the stage early, go into it intentionally and think about how you can strategize a better customer experience. You're going to get so many reviews. You don't even have to worry about mm -hmm. reputation software or any of these things. It's, it's really built in. Um, the second piece of advice I'd like to give to business owners is to um, understand who the relationship is between the person that's reviewing your business. If you went and you asked a bunch of buddies or friends and family to review your business and they never paid you money for a product or a service, they're technically not supposed to be writing you a review. That's correct. And so I would urge you to make sure that your reviews are coming from people who actually spent money with you uh, for a product or a service. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, a lot of times people will have a quick phone call with you and, or, or they'll have a consultation with you. Uh, a lot of, a lot of times those reviews won't qualify for removal. And unfortunately people online today may use reviews in a negative way, you know, to manipulate business owners and stuff like that. Just keep in mind, if this person spent money with you, they're allowed to review you. If they didn't spend money with you, they're not allowed to review you. So that's a that's a pretty easy way to think about who, like what's legitimate and what's not. And I agree with that, but people will still review you. So I have yep. a situation with one of my clients, right? And um, somebody came into his office or his, into his building. He's an auto shop, right? And um, gave him wanted to have an interview. Mm -hmm. He was in a meeting and got out of his meeting. The guy waited, I guess, paced back and forth in the waiting room, mm -hmm. went in for the interview and said, I want this, this position. And they didn't actually have a position that he was wanting. So he was kind of confused. Yeah. But he said, I don't have that position. You know, I appreciate you coming in and yada, yada, yada. Right. And then he left. Well, that individual left a one star review. Yep. Because, you know, said what a terrible shop it was and blah, 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 and on, on, on. And 
And so he replied to the review, but he also went to Google to try to remove it, and Google wouldn't remove it. You should have him give me a call. I can show him how to okay. do it correctly. Um, maybe he didn't. Maybe he did do it correctly, and maybe Google is just being really stubborn because that is a real thing. Sometimes Google just does not listen, and like an old mule, you just gotta give it a give him a few kicks, yeah, right? Yeah. You gotta be real consistent with communicating with Google administrators, mm -hmm. um, but. But yeah, that's that's exactly right. That review belongs on a recruiting website like Indeed.com right. or Monster.com, where there's there's relationships between the hire and the hiree. That does not belong on Google or Yelp or consumer sites, right? So that review totally qualifies for removal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we'll have to figure. We'll have to chat after this and figure out how to do that because, you know, once you reach Google and and they feel, I mean, you're kind of done. It's a done deal. They don't normally go back to changing their mind on anything, but let's Google, right? They get to do what they want. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm learning about this as I go still, even like last week we found out a really cool tactic that works really well. Um, but, but yeah, happy to take a look at, at that, uh, uh, at that later. Um, my, my third piece of advice, um, you know, <laughs> uh, it, it might seem self-explanatory like, oh, obviously, but, um, it's, uh, it, it, I, I apologize. I, I, fr I framed this totally the wrong way, but not to, not to worry so much about like marketing in general, but being remarkable kind of not, don't worry about marketing, focus on being remarkable and, uh, um, you know, life, you know, customers, everything generally tends to, tends to get better. It really does. Yeah. When your mindset and your attitude is in the right place. And doing the right thing and being remarkable, you're absolutely right. You don't find the uglies, yeah. right? You, they just don't find you because you're you're portraying what you want to portray about your business, your company, your product, your service, whatever it may be. And the more positive and happy you are, the better off you're going to have the following. Now, I realize nobody's perfect. Yeah. Nobody, no business. And if you think you're perfect, there's something wrong with you because you cannot please everybody all the time. How do you handle those when they're mad and you did make the mistake mm -hmm. and you're trying to make it right? What would be the best thing for an individual to do? Yeah, it's so easy to fall into this temptation of yelling at your customer to to make them feel stupid right because tall right because you know that they're wrong you know that they know that they're wrong but that doesn't matter as a business owner this is the time for you to be the foundation of how all businesses should do business right where you get to shine like a pillar of someone who's really above it all um it gives you the opportunity to try to make it right and use language that's empathetic, that shows them that you really do care about the customer, even though they're crazy, and to really just push through, how can I make them happy? Um, a lot of the times, a situation that can be corrected usually just starts off with a, a, a very simple apology, not necessarily owning up to any liability or admitting fault, but just, I'm sorry this isn't going the way you wanted so far how can we how can we turn this around I'm, I'm really motivated to make this work for you mm -hmm. um a lot of the times uh people usually most normal people are gonna tell you exactly what what's going on and how how you can fix things then you're gonna get some unreasonable people who are gonna want freebies refunds all sorts of weird things and they're gonna leverage you to do that and in that case Maybe you want to stand your ground and say, this is unethical. You're being unethical. I'm trying to do the right thing here. Um, but it's up to you because they can still leave you f reviews. They can still leave you feedback. So it's, it's up to every business on well, how far. Absolutely. Yeah. And I have found, you know, in my previous position running the company and building the company that, you know, there are going to be times where you just, no matter what you try to do to make it right, they're just not going to be happy. It just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. But if you have empathy, uh -huh. right? And y you know, what I found running that for 13 years, right, was the other person really all they want is to be heard. Uh -huh. 
They just want to be heard. Yep. They don't want to be talked over. They don't want to be read off of a script of what can be done or what can't be done, or it's not in my policy. I hate those words. It's not in my policy. I don't have the abilities. I don't have the authority. Okay, well, put me with somebody who does, right? I, I just get tired of that crap, right? Yeah. Just listen. Sometimes you just let them vent. You know, women like to vent, right? Sometimes if they just vent and you listen, they're done and it's okay. Yep. And you say you're sorry. We'll try to do better next time. And they're probably fine. Yeah. Nine times out of ten. Usually, uh, after you do the same set of deliverables over and over, you can usually identify the red flags of someone who's approaching, who's on the fence of becoming unhappy. Right? There's usually telltale signs of, of things that kind of occur right before they do that. Mm -hmm. um, human beings are like kind of like garbage trucks in a sense that we all carry around garbage and if you put on too much we're just gonna dump it all on you yeah and as a business owner you kind of got to know like you got to feel it out if 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 i under deliver today or if i push this meeting or if i cancel on them if i show up late th this person might unload all their garbage on me because they're already having a bad day their life is stressful enough as it is yep. so you, you just got to be mindful that if even a little thing that you might get wrong might trigger them to be totally unreasonable. And yeah, you got to use that, that opportunity to rise above. And just like you said, give them, give them a voice, let yeah. them, let them talk. Yeah. I mean, exactly what you said. You don't know what kind of day, you don't know what kind of life they're living. You don't know the husband and wife are going through a divorce. The kids are screaming, you know, the kids are on drugs, who knows, right? You don't know what goes on in people's lives yeah. and you can't certainly ask them, Yeah. but you're right. There are triggers that will boom, like them escalate and go crazy. So the biggest thing that I learned was to be quiet, mm -hmm. not interrupt. Although there's somebody out there watching this will say I interrupt all the time, but just be quiet and listen. And normally you can work things out. Not always, but normally. I like that. So I think there, there are, there, that's great advice that you just gave. And so now we have to take another quick break. And then afterwards, we are going into the treasure chest. I'm so excited to see what's in the treasure chest, Curtis. I can't wait. So we'll be back in just a moment. Are you using Google Business Profile for your business? If not, why not? In today's market, it should be one of the best marketing strategies a business owner can use. Even if you have a Google Business Profile set up and don't know what to do next, learn from the best. Google Business Profile experts Chris O'Connor, Lenny Rowell, and Alicia Maples. Register today for our Google Business Profile Masterclass at gmbprofiletipsandtricks.com forward slash master dash class dash sign dash up. That's gmbprofiletipsandtricks.com forward slash masterclass sign up. Let us help you crush your competition. Hi, everyone. I am Chris O'Connor back with Hidden Gems of DFW and Curtis Boyd from the Transparency Company all the way from sunny California. At least we have 70 degrees weather for you today. So yeah. you feel like you're right at home, right? Yeah, it's nice here. Well, now is time for the treasure chest, and I'm going to reach over and see and pull out what he has in this treasure chest. Aw, look at that. All right, talk about that, Curtis. Tell us what, why that's your treasure. Sure. So this is, uh, this is a card that I keep in my wallet always, everywhere I go, mm -hmm. uh, no matter if I'm traveling uh, across, you know, uh, internationally, but... Um, yeah, it was given to me by, by my girlfriend, uh, about seven and a half years ago. Um, I brought her over soup when she was sick and we were dating maybe three or four months. And after, uh, she got better, she made me a card and she's like, Chris, that was the sweetest thing. And I was like, Oh, it's no big deal. We ended up, we ended up getting married and we have a three-year-old son and, and you know, she's, she's my wife, but yeah, I keep it in my, I've always kept it in my wallet. I've always thought of it as a, a good luck and a good luck charm and something to to keep me like um 
and like motivated to Grounded. to take on e- e- yeah like it's so easy to give up on something it's mm-hmm. so easy to say this is inconvenient i don't want to do this i don't want to do that it's it's 40 minutes away it's 2 hours today i don't have time anytime i start having these negative thoughts these negative things of oh i can't do it i can't do it i just feel i hate to say it but my right cheek just really like given me this energy and and I so yeah I keep it in my wallet and that's that's my little treasure I think that's awesome I think you know I talk about this a lot everybody has to have their something and it doesn't matter if it's a poem it doesn't matter if it's something in your wallet I carry something in my pocket you know everybody's got to have that something to ground them to bring them back to reality and say you can do this Mm -hmm. yes you can those other words don't work right I don't believe in those other words, um, never have. And maybe that's why I continue to step forward in my life. I mean, sometimes you take two steps back, but then you take four steps forward, right? But I think that's awesome. I love that. And I hope that each and every one of you out there listening to this or watching has that something, whatever it may be. It could be something you look at before you walk out of the house. It could be like the basketball players do. They tap the the header, right? You know, Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what it is. What does it mean to you is what your treasure is. And that's the most important thing. So that leads me to, because we're in our last segment, we don't have that much time left. So Mm -hmm. After everything we've talked about and all the great advice you've given, you gave three great tips about being remarkable Mm -hmm. and, you know, how to write the reviews and being magical instead of worrying about the reviews because it all works well together. There's always something that pops in your head that you wish you said. Tell me what that is. Yeah, I I think it comes to uh, um, mindfulness with our customers and putting ourselves into their shoes. You know, they just paid sometimes a little bit, a medium amount, or a whole lot of money for something, they expect an amazing experience. They expect an amazing outcome, and they expect what they paid for. Yeah. And when you as a business owner expect them to write a review about them, they're like, what? You want a review? I just paid you. I just paid you good money, right? That's my hard-earned money. Mm-hmm. And you want me to review you? So what I always say, okay, let's take whatever they signed up for out of the equation and let's give them something that they did not sign up for. Try to think of little things that you can give them that they aren't expecting as a little cherry on top to end their experience. And that's when you're going to see those reviews flowing through. Um, but yeah, that's something I, I want to do. Do the say. unexpected. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, something do the want. unexpected. It really means a lot to a lot of people. Yeah. And, um, you know, sometimes I used to teach people just... Every day, write a thank you note to somebody could change. Mm -hmm. Handwritten thank you note. That was a stickler for me in the previous business. And I just think it's imperative. I have a a side business uh, on Etsy. In every packing slip that goes out, I write a handwritten thank you note. And it's not just thank you. It's a paragraph. Nice. Because I think that's important. I do appreciate their business. Any doesn't matter what business you're in, Mm -hmm. right? Yes, I know it takes a little time to do. I understand that. But do you understand the, if you understood the value of that simple cherry on top, Mm -hmm. right? Would make all the difference in the world. Yeah. Absolutely. So now that we're getting closer to the end, Curtis, I want everybody to know how to find you, reach you. Maybe they need your services. Maybe they have an agency. Maybe they have a government I don't know, wherever you want to go with this transparency company, because it obviously is growing by leaps and bounds. So tell us. Yeah. Uh, the easiest way to get a hold of me is on LinkedIn. And I start conversations all the time about reviews. Happy to chat with anyone who wants to start a conversation uh, about this stuff. Uh, if you are interested in auditing yourself, a competitor, just go to our website, askfortransparency.com, and you can learn in a few short minutes if they've earned or paid for their online reviews. Mm-hmm. Uh, the technology is now available to all of us. But yeah, uh, thank you so much, Chris. This has been a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, and this is the first time he's been on a podcast, so I'm glad that not only coming to Texas, but first time on a podcast. This is awesome. I am so excited. I'm I'm very grateful that you're here. I'm very grateful that I met you. Um, I can't wait to hear what you have to say tonight at DFWSEM, one of our groups, a local group. If you want to become part of it, you know how to reach me. 
Um, or you can go to dfwsem.org and uh, become part of our group because this is where I learn a lot of great stuff and have in the past on how to grow a business and do it right and be successful. I mean, you all know I went from zero to 1.6 million. It wasn't overnight. It was day by day by day. And some days there were fires and some days there were celebrations, but that's all part of being in business, right? Yeah. So thank you for being here. My pleasure. Really appreciate it. I just want all of you to know and always remember that you are insanely valuable. And despite any labels of doubt that you have about yourself or your business created by outside people and experiences, that you can do so much more. Get the words, I can't, out of your vocabulary because I can help you. Curtis can help you wherever you want to grow your business. Connect with me by phone or email. Uh, like me on YouTube, on my channel. Let's get you excited about your business again. Don't forget, hit that like button on my channel. See you next time. Thanks for watching and listening to Hidden Gems of DFW with Chris O'Connor. Don't forget to subscribe. Feel free to connect with me. I love hearing your successes.